Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the homestead off the grid. And uh, one of the things that you have to do when you're living off the grid, as I've said many times, I guess, is, is just being creative, solving problems, um, improving upon things, uh, learning and applying that knowledge going forward. So today I've got a project where I've learned for about a year um, and it's time to, to solve a problem. In here, I have breakers in between the main components, the solar charge controller, the battery, and the inverter, uh, and also one between the um, combiner box and the, the charge controller. So um, a lot of you may be tempted as I was, um, and I've recommended these things in the past, and I think that they do work fine for most cases, but um, we've got these, these magnet, or I'm sorry, these thermal breakers in here. Uh, these are DC rated breakers. They are appropriate for the, the occasion. Uh, Blue Sea Systems makes some good ones that are expensive and so forth. These are the cheaper ones that you would find uh, maybe occasionally in car audio, but mostly in like RVs and boats and things like that. And I'm sure that they work just fine. I mean, I know that they work fine. They actually perform their, their function. However, my theory is that because it is hot as blazes in Texas in the summer, and because we're using a lot of amps, these things will heat up and uh, break, so to speak, before they're rated amps. And I, in fact, I know they do. They, this one, um, This one I had to replace early on. Um, this one um, will, on a you know 95 degree day, 105 degree day, will under even a 50 amp load for a long enough period of time will eventually break. And I think again that's just heat buildup. It just gets too hot over time, and and it uh, and it it trips the breaker prematurely. So to solve that, um, unfortunately, there, there's not a ton of uh, good options out there. Um, other than just the one of these mamas this is from Outback Power but um, that doesn't matter I would have gotten a uh, one from uh, Magnum Energy uh, which is back in business by the way and I'm gonna be coming out with a video on that soon but I would have gotten one of those but they don't have any in stock and there were a couple that were on eBay with the enclosure and everything like that but I just don't have that kind of money so anyway this will work just fine. It's the exact same. It just doesn't, it's not compatible with the, well, it's probably not compatible with the Magnum uh, enclosures. But this one is a magnetic hydraulic unit, and I'm not sure how they work. Sorry if you're looking, if you're watching this video for technical electrical engineering knowledge, you're not going to get much from me. Um, I'm not sure how it works, but I know it doesn't work on heat like these other ones do, the, the thermal. So this one, these are guaranteed, um, according to the specs and according to the literature, these are guaranteed to trip without taking any damage. And they're guaranteed, I mean, they, they just use the full, the full power. This one's 250 amps. Uh, that one was 300, but I didn't, I obviously didn't need a, a, the full 300 amps ever. Um, I never do about more than 100, 125. But this matches the the input rating of this inverter so i chose to get a 250 amp it is uh you know good to up to 125 volts so this one will grow with me if i upgrade to 48 volts in the future whatever this one will be just fine now it does cost a lot more and that's why i didn't get these in the originally this one was about 125 bucks those ones are about 20 to 25 bucks so you kind of get what you pay for here obviously look at the size difference i mean first of all it's heavy so you know it's beefy but i mean that thing's like 10 times bigger so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and install that today and replace that breaker so that I can go ahead and use the full capabilities of my system. So what I need to do, since obviously um, I don't have the, the enclosure that this goes in, I'm gonna have to rig something up to mount this. Uh, I couldn't find any 
uh, breakers like this that were flush mount or surface mount all of the the solar brands and stuff like that they're all pretty much the same from what i could see and uh, they're all designed to go in these enclosures, that, these proprietary enclosures that they have that, uh, that I don't have. And so obviously it, it uh, screws into a panel and all of this stuff is hidden behind. Well, I don't have that. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna mount it to the back of a two by four uh, that's in the battery uh, electronics hut thing. And I'm going to put a, a block on each side. I'm gonna have to cut it to length, but I'm gonna put basically, excuse the, the filthy block here, but um, I'm gonna put one on each side that's just shy of three inches so that it'll get it up to this height. And then I'm gonna mount a, a flat piece of uh, a board uh, over top where it can screw down in and, and be held down in. So that's the plan and uh, i don't know how well it's going to work but again here on the homestead off the grid you kind of just have to wing it and uh, sometimes and learn from mistakes and try new things <laughs> so we'll see we'll see how this works all right so i cut a couple pieces as you can see this uh, is what it will look like so this is kind of flush with with this surface here and then i'm going to put like i said a a project board cut out a hole for the the face of the breaker and then um, and attach the the project board basically to to these sides and then these screws will go into the project board and hopefully that will hold it securely enough that it will operate uh, if not I'm gonna have to get even more creative with some clamps or something like that Excuse the uh, the cows across the street. They sound like they're being butchered or something. They are very loud today. Anyways, I've got this. Uh, so I, I made this little shed so that I could remove this backing plate. And there's some space in between to run stuff. Obviously, there's going to be stuff that pokes through and runs behind. So I've got this, <clears throat> this breaker installed here. It's very secure. That is not going anywhere. That's better than I had ever even anticipated. Um, so now I just need to attach these wires back to it, the, uh, one on each side. It doesn't matter which, which one really is which, I guess, but um, I've got to put them on these terminals and then we'll be ready to rock. Okay, well, it does not look pretty, but on the homestead out here, if you are trying to get everything perfect and pretty, you better have a lot of money. So I don't really care what things look like behind this door. Um, I'll build a nicer shed at some point, uh, much bigger obviously, because this can only hold a certain amount of batteries, but this will work. <clears throat> As you can see, I can flip this and it doesn't even move. So mission accomplished there. So I'm gonna go ahead and energize everything and turn on the generator and make sure everything works.
Okay, well, it's actually working, but because the battery is charged to a certain point, I mean, it's 26.4, and we've got a little bit of solar coming in now. I tried to do this early enough in the morning that the solar wouldn't affect anything, but um, because of that, the, uh, the generator is not going to charge. So I will film this again later in the day. Everything looks like it's working. Nothing is is uh nothing tripped everything is functioning so mission accomplished and i will test this out for several days and make sure that it works all right this morning we definitely have a partially discharged battery so we should be able to do a little bit better test to see how well this is going to work But it has been working great for two days now. Um, you know, the breaker is doing fantastic. I haven't, it hasn't tripped a single time. I've been using the, the big Dometic air conditioner on top, which um, requires like 80 something amps. So a huge load. Um, now we are limited to a 30 amp output from this, 30 amps AC goes out and comes in to that input to the system and then goes into the inverter. So we are limited to that much uh, power to basically charge this battery with. So, you know, that's like 3,600 watts. But that still ends up being over 100 amps that we should be able to charge this battery with, which, which can take it just fine. So. We will just let it do its thing as, as we normally do here in the morning. I usually give it, you know, the solar hasn't started doing anything yet because it's, it's uh, not even 8 a.m. yet, but um, I usually come out and give this, you know, an hour of a, of a boost in the morning with the generator. But uh, anyway, it's, it's all working really well. It still works in the middle of the day. It was 99 yesterday. I was able to run the air conditioner without tripping the breaker. So the problem it itself is actually solved. And uh, I eventually when I get some more money, I'd like to put one in, in that original position where I had one over here. And then uh, I don't think I really need one there because that's never going to see more than, you know, 50 amps or so. So, but anyway, very successful. Uh, just, I don't know if anybody's going to find this interesting, but this is kind of what you have to do. Uh, off-grid um, on the homestead when you don't have a very huge budget and you just kind of have to solve problems unfortunately sometimes the the cheap method doesn't work sometimes it works great uh, I've been using those things for years it's always been fine but now that I'm using a much more bi a bigger system and it's a production system and we're dealing with you know 100 degree Texas weather uh, those those little thermal deals just aren't good enough so had to graduate to the big boys. And, uh, and like I said, that, that unit will upgrade with my system to 48 volts eventually when I am able to upgrade. So thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time.